And students are heading to college or university, have a lot of firsts before them, and that can often include managing their own finances. And here's money expert Preet Banerjee. He is here with some financial tips to help post-secondary students avoid a all-ramen diet, <laughs> <laughs> which you were just saying you had for dinner last night. I did, yeah, because I'm actually back in school myself. But... Oh, okay. So uh, you're walking a mile in these shoes we're about to speak of. Eh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, maybe. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with your first talking point, which is uh, you say new students should actually kind of book a meeting with a financial advisor. Yeah, so I'm not talking about going down to the bank and looking for the high net worth financial advisor going to help you manage your millions of dollars, but all schools have financial counselors that can help you navigate student life and to help you create a budget and most importantly show you all the different scholarships, awards, bursaries and grants that are available that no one knows about. And some of these programs are so poorly known that there aren't a lot of applications, so the actually, you know, the chance of actually getting some of these awards are a lot higher than you think. So go and book a meeting with a financial counselor and you might find some free money. Okay, I'm only smiling because when I did my Masters in journalism. Uh, that's exactly what happened. I was the only one that applied for this one grant. Uh, there you I thought go. I was being bestowed a real honor. News you can use. And, and it was nice. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But then I found out I was the only one that applied. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You got the money. Yeah, exactly. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right. You also say don't get double dental and health coverage. So this is one of the biggest unknown tips out there for students. And this is when you go to a college or university, they often have you automatically enrolled in health and dental coverage. And if you have coverage through a parent, you have double coverage and only one of them is gonna pay. So if your parents have coverage for you, you can opt out of the university or college provided health and dental benefits. And it could save you over your four years of school about 15 to 1600 bucks. So this is a big deal and most important, there is a window from when you can opt out and it's usually within the first three or four weeks of the semester so make sure you look into this to see if this is something you can avoid as always the devil's in the details right read the fine print you never know what's in right there. a lot of yeah. people find out after the deadline that's yeah. the worst all right you say also apply for a job on campus yeah so there's a couple of benefits here you're gonna be close to your classes so it can be easier to get to and from your your job and also a lot of the employers for jobs on campus are very flexible because they know everyone here is a student Student. They've got other obligations when study time comes, you know, uh, preparing for exams, you might need some extra time off. So there's a little bit more flexibility and there's that convenience factor. And these days it's pretty hard to graduate without debt. So everything you can do to earn income instead of just having expenses while you're in school is a bonus. A big expense is housing. What do you recommend on campus or off? So this is both a financial consideration and a lifestyle consideration because there are a lot of students who aren't yet ready to be adults with their money. That's just, they're focused on school, they don't pay enough attention to it, and that's just the way of life. So for them, you know, being in residence, having a meal plan is fine. There's a predictability to their expenses. But for a lot of students, if they're more frugal, if they like making their own food at home, you can save a lot of money being off campus, having a few roommates, but also, you know, there's a balance to be struck there, how far off campus, et cetera. So you have to look at not just the financial aspect, but also how is it gonna affect your schooling? All right, let's talk at textbooks because uh, is there still $300 textbooks yeah. or more uh, out there in student uh, campuses and libraries? It does still exist and there's a lot of opportunities to save money when it comes to textbooks. So obviously buying used is top of the list. There are a lot of professors, if you ask them, say, listen, I don't have the money to afford all these textbooks, they can give you sometimes an alternative reading list that helps cover all the points that you need and can help you save some money. And there's a lot of professors who also sometimes avoid some of the expensive textbooks as well because they realize how much of a problem this is. And you, uh, you may have mentioned it, but I, I remember buying used books as well. From yeah, so you buy used textbooks. They also have textbook rental programs as well, which can help you with your cash flow. Okay. Uh, you recommend getting a student bank account. Yeah, so there is no reason to be paying a monthly fee for a bank account, especially if you are a student. So if you are paying a monthly fee, there are no shortage of options either at banks or at credit unions, or if you have an existing relationship, ask if there is a student package you're probably already i'm pretty surprised that people would pay monthly fees but apparently it does happen but it probably shouldn't i don't believe in monthly fees for anyone yeah <laughs> i love i le love this next tip oh get i free. was dying when i just read this yes. all right go yeah, no go ahead free, get free food at campus events yeah so okay so <laughs> 
students who use this in the past and are now <laughs> adults, we know that there are some people who are like professional seminar attendees and they just show up for the free food. Well, you can use that strategy in school because everyone knows on campus, if you want students to show up to something, make food available for free and you'll have tons of students. And as a student, I would say, take advantage of these offers. And it, this can help you with managing your budget, making sure you take advantage of all the free food that is offered at events. I, I can just see like a serious discussion going on in dorm rooms. It's like, we have three events. What's the menu? Uh, what's the best free food? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but you can also use these events to network and learn about student life and opportunities, et cetera. So there's the ancillary benefit, but the primary benefit is saving money on food. Absolutely. <laughs> what adults do at Costco. Yes. It's lunchtime. Yes. Costco. Samples, right? Let's go for the yeah. samples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Money Guy, Preet Energy with us this morning. Preet, good to see you as always. Happy studying. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back.